This is an I Am Listening exclusive podcast. We are a minority group. Yeah. And so the majority look and go, they don't want to do that. So it's kind of easy for them to judge. Hello and welcome to this Tread Lightly podcast from us at the Rainham Eco Hub. My name is Kaylee, And I'm Liz. And this podcast is where we delve a little bit deeper into those conversations with local everyday heroes that are doing small and impactful changes. We hope that you get as much out of this as me and Liz do and that you also laugh just as much too. Hello and welcome back to the episode where we are going to be talking to the wonderful Kerry, playing a real life game of vegan bingo. This may actually be one of the funniest ones that we have managed to record so far. And if you are a vegan out there, you have probably heard some of the things that Kerry is going to talk about five million times. Um, So tune in, have a laugh and have a listen. Kerry, what's vegan bingo? Vegan bingo is a way of having a discussion about all the things that get said about veganism, maybe debunking some myths and just generally talking about it um, and explaining everyone's different journeys. I, I love think, it. Can I just say, do you know what's really funny? You just said, Kerry, what's vegan bingo? Is if it is it? It's not an actual thing. We've just made it up. Yeah, we have just made it up. Oh, I thought it was like an actual thing and we was ripping it from Well, somewhere. I think we have these chats, don't we? And some of us are fully plant-based and vegan. Some of us are kind of on a bit of a journey. <clears> people <throat> are just trying to eat me less. <laughs> um, and some people are absolutely nailing it. But I don't know whether you guys are the same, but God, the same old kind of comments come out from the same kind of people that you just go, yeah, it's like I've never heard before those kind of comments. And some of these I've kind of, some of these vegan bingo statements are kind of fresh out of the mouth of people who you know are genuinely I think sometimes intrigued about veganism sometimes are a bit scathing sometimes a bit I don't know and also I I think when people say oh Kerry's probably the best person to ask this but I think when people say stuff I know I do this all the time I I make a swiping comment and not actually realizing that that might hurt some people do you know what I mean saying some things to some people might be and actually I think what I need to learn more is that I may have heard that 10 times. Yeah. Where actually that's the first time they've said it. Or they've thought it. And But that must be hard for you because I know I've said this five million times. Oh my God, I can never be vegan because I love cheese. You must have heard that five million times. And if you've got a quid every single time, you'd be minted. And actually, I need to realise that wasn't actually a question like to me. That's a statement that someone makes. And it's mm. not my responsibility to respond to that by going, yeah, but blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah, but that's blah. hard though, isn't it? It's, yeah. That is hard. Tell us about you becoming vegan. How did you start becoming or transitioning from eating meat or being veggie? Like what happened? What was the moment where you went, I'm going to not eat meat anymore? Okay. Well, that kind of general thing that people do, they go, right, new year, new me, that kind of stuff. I wanted to be more healthy. So I wasn't intending to be vegan or vegetarian. I just thought, right, I'm going to cut out red meat. So from January the 1st, I thought, right, I'm going to stop eating sausages. I'm going to stop eating ham, processed stuff to try and be more healthier. And when was this? This was 10 years ago. No, oh, yeah, 10 year anniversary. Yes. So I thought, right, stop eating red meat. I had no intentions of anything else, just stop eating red meat. So I did that. And then that kind of broadened my, I had to kind of think, oh, what should I have instead? So I started eating a lot more plant-based stuff. I did some research, looked at recipes. And then I had some chicken. And I remember this. I had some chicken at a restaurant and I had it and I was tasting it because I hadn't had meat for a little while it tasted really strange and I just thought actually I could quite easily not eat this again I was quite happy with what I was eating plant-based and the nice food I was eating and then I so that was in the March of that year and then I was looking at social media and there was a lot about dairy at the time and I kind of made that decision to go oh I won't have cow's milk I'll have goat's milk and then I realized it's all the kind of same processes of how to obtain it and then I thought actually I'm I'm gonna go vegan I'm gonna get rid of the whole dairy point and then from March to October it took me that long to transition because of cheese was it really yes um I did lots of 
because I, I am very much a research person. I did lots of research as why cheese is quite addictive. And there's a certain protein in it that makes it addictive. Casey. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So I was thinking, right, OK, I'm going to wean myself off it. Um, like an addiction kind of thing, do you think? It is an addiction. Yeah, you, people are literally a, are addicted to cheese. That's because of the casein in it. Yeah. Because of the what? It's called casein. It's a type of um, protein that's in that's it. That's added or that is naturally an in protein. it? protein. Oh, God. So then I looked into like vegetarian cheese, you know, I looked into all those kind of things. And then I remember... Hold on, what is a vegetarian cheese? Because I read this somewhere. Is What is that? Vegetarian cheese doesn't have rennet in it. Rennet is from... A, oh no, I know this. Yeah, it's from a car. I think it's from a calf. So it's inside of... It's a, an animal product that they put into cheese. So you can have rennet-free cheese, so vegetarian. So a lot of vegetarians, they will make that change and go, do you know what, I'm going to have cheese, but I'm going to have vegetarian cheese. But... Like, I was 37 when I learned this. Like, 37, I, never... I what? was today years old when I learned that. <laughs> See, I am a bit... I research and read way too much. <laughs> so I get obsessed with things. And this is... I mean, there's a lot of people that say people are vegan because it is can be, you know, uh, a food addiction that you're looking at all your ingredients and things like that. It, it is actually labelled sometimes as a food disorder because it is you're, you're constantly looking at ingredients and what you're putting into your body. Why does veganism, bigger picture, feel like it sometimes gets demonised? Why does it rattle so many feathers? Why are we playing vegan bingo today? What My opinion is because, from my point of view, I don't want to cause harm on any animal. And when you... That when you kind of ask people why they're not vegan, it kind of holds a mirror up, and they're kind of they know they'd never kick a dog, but they're quite they would you know they're actually paying to kill an animal instead. So it, I think it does hold a mirror up, and it holds a lot of guilt for people. And I think a lot of people do want to change, but they're not really sure where to start. And food isn't something you could just not do; it keeps you alive. Mm. So it's not something you could just like oh I won't wear leather shoes anymore you know you could choose others where food is actually keeping you alive and it is hard really hard like I said it took me 10 months to go completely vegan and I remember my last non-vegan pudding was a creme brulee and I remember enjoying it on the eve before I went vegan thinking this will be the last dairy for a dairy product that I will have because at the time 10 years ago there wasn't all the amazing alternatives that there are now yeah so it was kind of like and I've never had one since like not even an alternative one. Do you know what I love about you though? So obviously we've only been friends for about three years and I am a flexi and I mean, I don't know the last time that I ate meat, but I am really trying to um, cheese. Yeah, cheese stop, is stop hard. Cheese. I don't really, I hate milk anyway, so I don't really have milk. But the one thing I love about you is that I, bear in mind my previous comment around um, people do say things and then not realise how that might affect other people. But I have felt like I've been able to like say to you, oh, Kevy, oh, I can't find cheese that I like, like a vegan cheese. Oh, it's so disgusting. And you're, you're so not judgmental to me. You're actually really kind to me. And you're like, oh, how about trying this? How about trying this? And you're always really like, encouraging and positive mm. even though you know that I'm living a lifestyle that that you've chosen not to and I think that just shows what kind of person you are really thank you if I have been on a massive journey mm-hmm. if you had known me maybe first two three years of being vegan yeah. I'm telling you I was angry really really angry because it kind of makes you look at the people you love mm, and think why way. aren't you why are you paying why are you contributing to torture and pain mm, so mm. really difficult for me but I got to the point where I was like I st- can't cut out all these people out of my life they respect me they love me and so I love and respect them and if people are respectful to me I'm more than happy to have conversations I'm more than happy to have you know stupid games of vegan bingo yeah and if you if you can't (laughs) find a decent cheese then you know that's absolutely fine everyone's taste buds are different yeah. I gave up eat, I didn't even try vegan cheese for six months yeah you're probably told me very sensible disgusting, yeah. like, and they were back then you are probably sensible so if you know I'm more than happy to talk to people about it and I was if people respect me Kaylee I respect them back and do you find and this comes from being you know veggie for nearly god 30 30 odd years which is amazing but back in the kind of 90s when I was veggie, it would be that I would sit down, I'd have my meal in front of me and people would almost flock to look at what the weird <laughs> freak is eating. Because it made them feel better that actually they go, whoa, look at that. That's that not very nice. So I'm not going to be veggie so because of that. You're, you've been veggie for f- what then? 
I was like, like 11, I think, when I went veggie. How did you do that? Just just go... In the 90s, it was rough, man. It was yeah, but rough. How did you go, oh, I'm just going to be veggie? Was your whole family veggie? No. You just no. went, I'm going to do it? Yeah. It's a bit like my daughter. Your mum supported you? Yeah. yeah. And cooked dinners and yeah, all those kind of things. Yeah, dinners, which is super kind. And I've never felt judged and I've always felt really supported with That's being really veggie. Good. But having said that, I haven't been immune from being on the receiving end of this kind of dirty word that's been bounded around which is kind of the heaviness of v- vegan and my daughter who doesn't eat meat you know the kind of comments that she gets at school from kids who are like you know come and join me at the chicken shop after school it's a real kind minority of- it's the minor we are a minority group yeah and so the majority look and go and then they don't want to do that so it's kind of easy for them to judge and at- find ways to how many treat. times though have you given people vegan food and they don't even know it's vegan and they really like it well people eat apples and bananas <laughs> I'm so glad you just said that I read something the other day no I kid you not I read something the other day and it really really stuck with me it was something like I can't believe we end up having to eat animals or animals um when we've got things like cherries and lychee and you know all of the like they named all of these amazing foods that are natural that grow from the ground and i when i read it i was like it made my mouth water mm-hmm. they'd obviously like picked foods that like really i thought oh my god that's so true isn't it we could actually go out the way to make food <laughs> that actually we've got that's so much more flake like do you know what i mean yeah. i eat way more I mean I'm not a vegan salesperson for anyone else I'm not trying to sell you anything (laughs) I'm not trying to like steer you towards things or anything but I eat the most amazing things now than I never have ever had before I am always envious of your bowls that you send through to be fair oh my god the amount of stuff that you can have now is just I love food my mum says to me oh you all you think about is food I'm like yes I love food (laughs) so being vegan for me is like I need to find the best things that I can have that just don't contribute to animal suffering that's literally all it is gone are the days of the spicy bean burgers hey yeah uh, nice spicy bean burgers yeah bean burgers aren't my friend (laughs) (laughs) you'll be for another day you'll be here in a little (laughs) choo choo in a minute right so I'm excited so we are actually going to play vegan bingo and we've got our dobbers we have got a little helper in the studio today by the name of Bella do you want to say hi Bells hello Bells is my daughter and she's been roped in to do bingo calling for the day so uh, we're playing for a line and a house people are there prizes we didn't talk about this I mean there might be prizes they're biscuits no there is a prize actually oh, I can't tell you because it's a surprise I've just seen it by the corner of my eye a surprise prize yeah you may have given it to me in the first place but you, but you never know you, we're playing for I haven't got a good memory these days that's fine we're playing for uh, UK's best-selling vegan lifestyle magazine, Vegan Life. Oh, I don't think I gave you those ones. It's a February 2018 edition. Uh, I think I may have got it from Cat. Fabulous. <laughs> so that's what we're playing for today. It's got a beautiful um, picture of the great palm oil debate, Joey Carbstrong. Oh, I love him. I've seen him live. Oh, chocolate Amazing. and cheese. Uncool for cats. I don't know what that means. Cat cafes. I don't know what that means. Joey Carbstrong is amazing. Uh, Let's go for it, Bella. Wind up those balls. Very professional here. Wind up those balls. Oh, what is this? Number five. <gasps> number five. Number no, five. who's got number five? Hey. Oh, what you got? We got. Oh. Read it out. What's number five, oh, Kerry? I love this one. I what is it? I get to this quite a lot. We'd be overpopulated with cows. It's a big issue, what? Kerry. As people, people have not ever said that to, have they? What? Uh, yes, what, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, what people say are what are we going to do with all the cows if we're not using them for meat and for dairy and um, yeah so that's kind of a question that gets asked to me what, what are your thoughts on that what do you think is going to happen to all the cows oh god this was literally a live comment that was made this week to my daughter in food uh, not food tech like culture and ethics or something whatever it is at school where they're like well we have to eat them otherwise we'd be overpopulated and she said nothing. <laughs> Not because she doesn't know the answer. No, but just she because doesn't feel safe. I guess so, yeah, I guess so. Uh, I've never thought of that. I would People, normally say something stupid like that, but I've, I've... I thought, you know, I'd go out for walks. I'd go, oh, I'm looking at the lovely wildlife, take pictures of the cows, take pictures of the sheep. And then some said, you know, they're not wild. You know, they're bred for us, oh, for God. supply and demand. All right, like, cheery. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I never really thought about that. Cows are not wild. You know, there are breeds that were wild, but now we breed them domesticated because they're livestock. Yeah. So actually, if 
if we don't have them for meat or for dairy, then they will just stop breeding them. And actually, it, then we're not, we're not going to be overrun with them. And actually, they still you will use cows for pet food, so it'd be, be fine. Do you know? So my sister told me the other day, right? I kid you not, this woman has got a cow as a pet, right? There's a whole other conversation anyway, but she's got a cow as a pet, right? And she, she like, I don't know if it's a calf or what, I don't know. But apparently, when they get to a certain age, like they think that they are like married to you, like in love with you. <laughs> they are Is this really true? intelligent animals. Yeah, she said that they, they, um, they literally think that you are together. That that's so sweet. Do you think that's true, or do you think she's putting my leg? And then she said she like lays down and reads a book on this cow. Like the cow lays down and she just lay cuddles up with it and reads a book. I what? kid you not. She told me this yesterday. Honest. She only lives in Stoke somewhere. <laughs> I, c- I can imagine that it, that could be true. They're very compassionate beings, and the fact I went to see some cows, um, rescued cows, and before we went into the field, we all got told we had to go and um, greet the patriarch. We had to go to him and we had to stroke him. So it was a bloody man. No, there was a matriarch before that. Okay. It was a woman before, it was a female before that. Oh, okay. But what happened was, is, um, it, it's, it's, it's a bit of a, it might be a bit sad, but yeah. basically, obviously you've got the herd. They made their own herd, even though they're all from different places. They made yeah. their own herd. And at the time it was a matriarch and the matriarch kind of knows when she's ready, when she's going to be leaving this earth. She's laid down and she knows. And then what happens is um, she chooses the next herd leader. Oh! And the herd leader kind of gathers around her and they were circling her. And basically the herd leader breathes her last breath onto the new leader. Oh my God. And they what? say goodbye to her. It's phenomenal. Where I've did never you seen this. That? This is at the sanctuary that I went to. <gasps> and the woman that was telling us, honestly, we're all in tears. And she's like, it's one of the most amazing things that they've ever experienced. Oh my God. Because they are so tight knit community. I'm it's learning so cows. much about cows this week. And then literally, we just have millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of them for eating. And yeah, they don't. Them. And their lifespans are obviously very short because they um, don't need, they, they become useless in a way um so they never get to live out their whole their long natural lives but if they was allowed to they live quite long don't oh, they yeah, cows yeah, yeah. yeah i've been snogged by a cow <laughs> i love cow i let their hay breath it's literally the best i mean i'm not a lover of hay breath but i did get oh. snogged do you remember when we went to um we went on a canal boat we went on a canal boat and to go to the shop we had to walk through this cow field and i got a little selfie with this cow and he like licked my face oh, snogged, like by, a cow. snogged face. by a cow yeah it was beautiful anyway so You've got one. Yep. We need the next ball. Ball. Bells. I was going to say balls. <laughs> Liz has got... Oh, I need to tell you this, Kerry. Liz has got... You can do the next thing. The next... Uh, have you got it already? What's it called? What number? The number is number two. Number two? Oh, I've got this. I'll eat twice as much meat to make up for it. What? Have you not heard that? No, but, well, obviously I'm mixing in the wrong circles because, oh, no, 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 I don't I think it's in the right circles. too many vegan pages, I do. So, <laughs> I so someone would say, I'll eat twice as much meat to make up for your not eating meat. I don't think I can say much about that. More on. Move on. Next ball. Next ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 15. Number 15. 15. Oh, I've got that one and all. Ah! Oh. Oh. Oh, I know what this is going to be. What's it say? Um, on a desert island. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you were stuck on a desert island, would you, would you would you eat meat? Yeah. Do you do you have that said to you from Give time to time? Over. I don't get told that, but I've seen the vegan <coughs> answer to that. Okay. And it's just like, well, if you lived on a planet <laughs> full of really nice fruit and vegetables, would you still eat meat? <laughs> Because that's where we live. Yeah. You know, there's plenty of stuff here that we can be eating and we're still eating meat. Because guess what? Like, plants and food grow on a desert island. Did you know that? <laughs> Jeez. See what I mean? Move on. Next ball. Next ball. <laughs> the number is number one. Oh. Kelly's eye, number one. Who's got number one? This is Me. I. Go on. I'm going to need your help with this one because I bet you this comes up a lot. 
babe I've got bigger issues than this <laughs> that is kind of the last thing that people say and they normally do a little joke with it do they wobble their head when they finish when they want to finish the conversation it's kind of this, is th- this isn't the first thing that people say to me it's normally all the other kind of things that we've talked about first yeah, yeah. and then when they're not happy with the answer I've given or they can't think of anything to come back with they're like well I've got bigger issues to deal with. I've got to pay the bills. I guess that's a way to just shut the conversation down if yeah. they don't want to listen anymore. I mean, that's a quick yeah. way to shut down any conversation, yeah, vegan true. or not, really. <laughs> Which is quite rude, in my opinion. True. Right, what's up next, Bells? Uh, number 80. 8-0. Oh, oh, sorry. Eight that's me. Mm-mm. I prepared oh. the balls. <laughs> next ball. Eight, one job. Number seven. Number seven. No. Oh, I've got this one here. So, um, soy... Um, is a big contributor to to deforestation as well. Okay, yep. I can give you some really sexy facts. Go on, geek out on us. Go on, (laughs) go on. Because I get told this quite a lot. Right. What, that you're a geek? (laughs) No, about the soy thing. (laughs) Oh, do you? Um, Basically, all soy that is um, consumed by humans directly is normally around 2-3%. Whereas the rest of it is used for animal feed. So people might believe that their cows and sheep are grass fed and you might be able to get that um, if you ask for it specifically, if you look for specific meat, organic meat. But all of the livestock that people are eating, um, they, they are eating soya beans to fatten them up quickly, ready to be processed. So, yeah, deforestation is a huge you know a huge huge problem and they are wiping out trees to grow soya plantations but like i said it's being imported and used for meat predominantly not eaten by people no like i say two percent is used um for human consumption and people say well you have soya milk you contribute to the whole thing um i make sure if i do have soy milk i'm um i only have you can choose european like soya beans from european sources or you make sure um it's sustainable sustainable accreditations and things that's super helpful thank you thank you do you want to live more sustainably but you just don't know where to start did you like me sign up for veganuary and accidentally buy chicken sausages on day two does the whole eco thing leave you feeling confused and sometimes overwhelmed if so this is the podcast for you remember to check us out on our socials on facebook and instagram the Rainham eco hub Next ball, please. Next ball is number three. I've got three. Go on, Liz. I think you're... I know you can't see this, listeners, but Bella is sitting next to Liz and I think they are... Are you helping me cheat, Bells? Yeah. I don't see them as an animal. Have you heard that before? What, you don't see an animal as an animal? No, I don't see my fish Uh, fish fingers as an animal. I don't see my chicken nuggets as a chicken. I don't uh, see my burger as a cow. Yeah, and I mean, that is the scary part. People don't know where their food comes from a lot of the food we eat is full of synthetic chemicals Mm. and you know it is shaped it is shaped into weird and wonderful things like you know sausage shapes and burger shapes and fish fingers and you know there's lots of um meats there's lots of animals that are in food that i never even thought of like worst worst i can't say it worcestershire sauce yeah that's got anchovies in there's just so many strange um items in food you never think like beetles the you know shellac and um caramine and all those kind of things are in food and sweets that are from wow. insects to make Beetles. them shiny yeah oh my god and even bread bread has got vitamin d in it and they take that from duck and goose feathers you shouldn't so have told this to liz look they, at her face i don't need to eat bread though but that's for another podcast <laughs> <a long time>. <laughs> <laughs> but it, i mean people, people probably obsessed going i haven't got time to be looking at ingredients but there are some amazing resources out there where you can literally just it gives you lists of things to look for and avoid and certain foods that actually you know have got animal products in that you never even think and once you know you know as well right there's yes. certain and things. we share stuff you know we share things with each other and a lot of the packaging and labeling is much better now so something with obviously the vegan sign on it you know there is and if it isn't it's vegetarian you can kind of see why it isn't vegetarian salt and vinegar crisps man salt and vinegar crisps i've got milk in like who needs to put milk in salt and vinegar crisps that's mad but, but bacon crisps are vegan because yeah. it's all synthetic what flavorings is, oh, mad isn't it do you feel like you learn it quicker now do you feel like you oh, you're just rattling it off your head whereas i'm going okay 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 i guess it's like anything isn't it the first few weeks or months you must be reading every packet and now you just know what you buy at the supermarket and don't give it a second thought yeah exactly and i think um 
it's updated. I do look at um, vegan websites and um, there are pages on social media and things like that. And they do give you up- updates. There's one thing that I used to really like. There's um, Fry's chocolate bars and they used to be accidentally vegan. So they weren't labelled vegan, but they had no milk products in it. Um, but now they've started to add milk in it. So one of my friends said, oh, just to let you know, Fry's have now got milk in it. So I obviously think, oh, great, I won't buy them anymore. What, why do they bother? I don't know. Why? But guacamole, guacamole used to have milk in it because it's cheaper to use dairy than it was avocados. So there was lots of guacamole. That I was like, oh my God, I can't have it. But it is literally avocados, tomatoes and onions. But they were putting milk in it to thicken it up. <sighs> they use it for emulsifiers and all those kinds of things. I absolutely things. hate milk because that's for another day. But grim. This is for our special podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bells, what next number? Ball, please. Is number eight. Number eight. <gasps> I've got number eight. Uh, I think one says... Animals eat animals. <laughs> <laughs> if I someone said to you, if, <laughs> if someone said to you, animals eat animals. Yep. This is the whole circle of life conversation. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> this comes up quite a lot. Does it? And, you know, when you look at carnivores and yeah, they do eat, lions do eat zebra, you know, lions or tigers eat zebras. I can't think. Lines, I'm not going to fact check you. Say whatever. <laughs> we'll agree with you. <laughs> Carnivores in the wild do eat meat. But again, they um, they commit infanticide as well. We don't do that. They torture other animals and kill out, they kill their young and kill their own species. Yeah, we might do that, but it's against the law. So using the actual animal, um, eat animal thing shouldn't really be a reason to why we do. Because lions don't go to Tesco's and buy everything. Lions don't grow their own vegetables. You know, carnivores have to eat meat and that's just the way that it is animals and that species. We have, we've developed a society where we don't have to do that. So that is a really rubbish Thank reason. Thank the Lord for that. <laughs> Jeez, could you imagine? Seeing a lion in Tesco's. Well, ow, ca- ow, ow. I think cannibalism is uh, illegal for last time I knew. So, uh, yeah. Damn it, that's my dinner ruined. <laughs> that was next number. The next number is number nine. Oh, number that's nine. That's me. This will be an easy one for you to answer. I hate tofu. I couldn't be vegan. <laughs> I saw a poster that showed you like what non-vegans think tofu look like, what it looks like. And mm. it is literally just a square block made of soybean, soybean curd, you know. Asian cultures have eaten it for years and years and years. We've mm. only just kind of gone, oh, tofu. And they're probably thinking, oh, my God, my aunt's, you know, it's been around for years and it is, you know, amazing for their diets. So, and but you can make the most amazing food. You can make puddings out of it. You, you can make so many really tasty stuff. My friend at work bought an air fryer. It's changed his life. He is using his air fryer um, for tofu, all the different marinades and toasting tofu in an air fryer is absolutely a game changer oh does he do um you know dinners for <laughs> for, for, for friends for crowds or? we asked him what he wanted for his birthday and he actually put on that this is like an early 30s guy he's been vegetarian for a while and we're like what do you want for your birthday he went i really want a tofu press i really want to oh. experience this tofu in my air fryer and we're like absolutely and the person that bought it read all the reviews and he went i'm gonna buy one as well and he's like, oh. a vegetarian oh. that's, that's the thing you don't even be vegetarian or vegan to eat tofu just experience it and see what it's like yeah i think though i, I do think that we have become like i'm speaking for myself here like just samey and so bland with the way that we eat like cooking back I don't know my grandparents day like they would home cook everything like they would not go out for dinners they would not yeah they wouldn't have takeaways and stuff and so like they would home cook everything and it was like your normal two meat two veg because it was just that is what you did and I feel like now loads of people don't cook now anyway they don't kind of experiment and if they did they kind of just stick with what they know they and they know that they like they don't kind of then you know dip into People like haven't got time and the amount of ultra processed food that's now available yeah is scary and when you actually look at things that have got more than 20 ingredients in you're like and you don't recognize them that's, mm. the, that's what i try and look at like if there's things on there i go what are they and there are that many ingredients you think you need to be looking at is that good for your body probably not Probably my whole diet, to be fair. <laughs> it's not good, is it? Next ball, please. The next ball is number 13. Oh, I have number 13. <laughs> is this is a good one. 
I love cheese. <laughs> Did you? I think we can take that one off. <laughs> I, no, no. Can I be honest? Right, I actually. So I do like cheese, right? But since this whole shenanigans of like trying to, um, that's the, that's my one. I mean, that and chocolate. I, I know there are good vegan chocolates, but they are my two sticking points, right? Since I've started, yeah. So I've, since I've started to um, play around with the whole dabble in the old cheese, vegan and cheese. They are getting better. Big but, brands. I mean, they are, are getting. Yeah, vegan they are. Now. And to be honest, when I've put them in a meal, so when I've cooked like something, and I, you have to melt like a cream vegan cheese in you it. You made the nicest, yeah. like cheesy dinner. The pasta ago. pot thing. That so was nice. amazing. Taming Twins recipe, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is a sausage pasta pot, one pot thing. And then I, I just switched all the ingredients for vegan. So vegan so soft nice. cheese and then vegan cheese on top. Yeah, so you can't taste that though, like as in, because it's all mixed in. So it's kind of, it just, it is what, what is it is. What's the hard but Is it a cheese toasty that you find hard? So I find, yeah, like melted cheese or like I, because my cooking is so bad, <laughs> I, no, I'm not even joking. My cooking's really bad. I then put melted cheese on it to make it taste all yeah, right. But, because, but I, when I was vegetarian, yeah. I thought it'd be okay just to have bowls of vegetables <laughs> and put, <laughs> put loads of cheese on the top. <laughs> and actually, I was, and it was the salt. You want the salt. Yeah, I mean, probably, to be fair. Probably. But now I'm starting to like get into, so I am following Taming Twins. I do follow her recipes. And so now I'm like experimenting with some of the stuff. Uh, it is better. But I had cheese the other day and it was gritty. Yep, some of them have got weird textures. Do you know one of them that I won't name in shame, but has got a really weird funky smell. And that is a big brand vegan cheese. Really? And I won't eat it because... Well, no, this was normal. It just smells funny. No, this was... I hate saying that, normal. It's not normal. What, I dairy? had dairy cheese, right? And it was gritty. And it was like... It, it tasted funky. And I thought... Oh no, I can't. I, it was a not. It was a brand that I normally get. Well, I don't even <gasps> get a brand. I get a cheese. Yes, uh, and that does happen. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I ain't going to go and slap a bit of vegan cheese in my sandwich and be happy. I'm still not there yet. But I could taste the difference in the dairy cheese where I was like, I'm not sure I like this. So. Oh my goodness. It does happen, people. people. It does happen. Go on, next number, because I am really close to a line no, and no, I'm. I've only got one. Oh, yeah. You've been stitched right up. I have. All right, go on, Bells. Next number, number four. That's me, I've got a line. Are you joking? No. What, what is it? One? It's a good one. Plants feel pain too, Kerry. Oh. What? Yes. Plants, feel... Plants feel pain too. This is the whole central nervous system I'm so glad you I'm so glad you're here do you know that <laughs> um hold on can we just can we present her with a with a um, prize a line. <laughs> vegan life dun 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 Ooh, going to you that, on the front. that looks amazing that dinner oh that does what is it because it didn't actually say what it was it's like heart shape with like I don't know. Like pastry, tomato. Oh, that looks really good. It looks really nice. But do plants feel pain, Kerry? Is this a justified argument well, for people who want to explain that people who eat plants are horrible and mean? Th th there's a few kind of ways to answer this. Obviously, if you're looking from a biological point of view, animals have central um, nervous systems. Um, they feel pain. Um, plants, when you cut the grass, it smells wonderful. That is a defence mechanism from grass because oh it's my. being cut. La, so la, people, la, bring, la, la, la. people bring that into the conversation, you know. But the, the best answer that I can give you is if you were really worried about plants feeling pain, then why are you eating animals to eat the plants? Bosh. <laughs> Next number, Bells. You're so good. Next number is number 11. Number 11, oh, legs 11. Yeah. Go on, Kerry. Oh, that's... Finally got one. Horrible. My one says, but it's already dead. But it's already dead, Kerry. It's already dead. No, I have heard this one, and that is the most silliest thing I've ever heard. Do you know why? It's not already dead, is it? Well, it's dead by the time you. it's on your plate, I guess. It's, a, it's dead by the time it's in Tesco, so or what's the, the point? Supermarkets. I mean, roadkill, you could have that argument with that, maybe, but because that is dead. It's by accident. It's, it's died, right? I think but their point is right, is if you're walking into any reputable supermarket and you, uh, you're oh, walking up the meat sorry. aisle, if you didn't go and buy that meat, it's dead anyway. So what is the point in not buying it? Right. So then you look backwards, don't you? And you think, how did that, how did that animal get there? It's because of supply and demand and the fact that 
your money is actually paying for that animal to be killed, to be put packaged, to be put into that reputable supermarket. And I guess if you take the demand away... And actually, there are studies showing now that obviously vegan food is increased, which is actually slowing down the demand for meat. Is that true? Yes. I've heard as well, I applied for a job with Veganuary, that um, South America is doing kind of better than Europe in some ways in terms of like slowing down their meat consumption and increasing. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Mm. Really like kicking off in places like India and Brazil and things like that. Oh, wow. Have a look at the Veganuary website. I love Veganuary. Me too. It's very cool. <laughs> oh my God, the amount of good, even more. I, vegans look forward to Veganuary because all shops make a yeah, huge effort. Don't they? So we literally go and buy as much as we can and then store it throughout the year. Stockpile. <laughs> go up, Bells. What's next? Next number, number six. That's got to be you, Kerry. Yes. <gasps> I heard a vegan who died of now this is um, one <laughs> oh that I can comment on because this was in the news recently I don't know if anyone's heard that of, girl yeah yep. I knew she you was, was say vegan that. and she died so that's a really good reason not ever to be vegan because one person died of being vegan can right. I just say though did she actually just die not because she was vegan I mean I don't know I think she very poorly wasn't she yeah. she, she died because poorly. she wasn't eating probably the amount of calories she needed to sustain her body right. and I think she was just eating uh, coconuts or plants or something so she was eating a plant-based diet but she was you know of, as a facade as herself. a facade for being very poorly yes. in other ways as well I, and this was kind of what I read through it as a kind of it was clickbait for news to say vegan dies like to try and put people off because we all know that agriculture dairy farming is all subsidized by the government so it's kind of like they don't want people to not eat dairy and meat because of that how did that make you feel when you were saying when you were seeing the clickbaity kind of headliney stuff that said girl dies after eating vegan diet for five years did you want to step in and comment and say she's poorly anyway or you know this isn't because she's vegan she is a vegan and she's poorly do you do you get do you get drawn in Yes, I do. And I think um, there are certain celebrities that have made a big deal about being vegan and then they've gone back on it. And so it's very easy. It, it makes me feel really sad that they are very influential. And I've, you know, people write on there, well, she couldn't have been vegan in the first place and all this kind of stuff. There's so much out there media wise. And it takes one person to be cross to then stereotype all vegans as being really angry and really destructive. So actually, that's why I am, I, I've pushed back. I'm not going to be, re- I'm not going to be responding to anything like that there are amazing activists out there that do this as their job they literally stand in supermarkets they stand um in shopping centers just explaining veganism to people and trying to change their minds mm-hmm. i don't think i'm strong enough to be that person so i'd rather kind of influence or kind of be supportive to people that are on that journey you are and i'm so, so glad you are yeah <laughs> look at us i'm so glad you are next ball please number number 10 house are you no she can't win a line and a house another did. magazine for her <laughs> thanks for um thanks for that bells right what was it for those of you that don't know liz is a little bit of a grinch right oh no is and it the so christmas edition you've got no! the christmas edition oh. of vegan food and living and it says start planning for christmas oh great uh how environmentally sustainable is your vegan diet give it to kerry Amazing. it's got 75 plant-based recipes inside though and nine tips for hosting christmas on a budget look Ooh, at that's you another podcast so we <laughs> hope that we get invited around for dinner and your mate with the tofu press can come round cook us dinner and have it a is that's amazing I can't, once this one last one though I can't believe that why what is your oh Number yeah go on, what is it sorry sorry last one go on bacon though Kerry oh wow <laughs> bacon what, what does that mean what does that statement mean that they that that's their favourite it's like cheese oh it's their cheese yes. bacon to me if I smell bacon I think I think of when I used to have hangovers because it would always be the perfect hangover food so that's what because it. of the salt do you reckon the smell yeah the salt and the smell oh. yeah but bacon um, is uh, you know tastes really good I didn't go vegan because I didn't like the taste of bacon it's what it comes yeah, from no, cool. and yeah. there are amazing alternatives for bacon some of them smell a bit weird some of them don't cook as well as they are but the technology is getting so much better so there are some really nice if you want to try a decent bacon go to a vegan cafe because they will always use the best one that is another best thing, thing I was going to say to you because I do ask you for recommendations for this because knowing the best places to go like if you do want to go out somewhere 
do not go to somewhere. I we went for a Christmas meal, meal right for um, an event, and they did no vegan option. They did no vegan option in 2023. They had no vegan option, right? <laughs> So I was like, oh, okay. Uh, so I can't even remember what I had. I think I might have had like a... Is it a fruit salad? <laughs> or or a soup? That's normally something that I... No, I think I had a, a mushroom something, but obviously I, it had poxy cream in it, which was fine because I'm not actually a vegan, but I would have preferred to have had a vegan option, especially if I'm going out. It's kind of nice to be able to try somebody who knows how to cook. Mm. <laughs> That's the thing. You can cook a, a nice... You can cook something at home, but, you know, if you go out, you're better off no. trying vegan food. Different I stuff, yeah, yeah. In vegan restaurants, because they will exactly. use the best cheese, the best milk. And they know what they're doing. Yeah, they yeah. know what flavours complement each other. Yeah. It's like you go out for dinner, yeah. you're gonna, they're going to make a better pizza than you can at home. So That's just the way it is. I do think we should do another one um, on another time, vegan episode, where you can actually tell us the best places in Kent to go, because you have... You have ventured out, haven't you? I love food. I love food. <laughs> I want to support as many vegan cafes as possible and get talking to them. They share recipes with me. They actually collaborate with each other. And it's just a lovely so community nice. of people. So they're trying to just support each other. So if people are wanting to, um, after this, they might want to dip into their toe into a bit of veganism, where Facebook page to get a bit of support, what would you suggest? Uh, the Invicta. I knew you was going to say that. Vegans. That's so lovely, yeah, aren't they? It's all like the Kent and Medway stuff. They have meetups as well. They have picnics. They put up with my stupid questions. Yeah, and they and they they, all, they like a community and they arrange to meet up and stuff. And you bring your own food and have a nice time. And your number one, just for now, best place to eat in Kent. Um, this is hard. Are we allowed to do this, Liz? I'm just thinking it's the one in Home Bay, the Wallflower. Oh, Wallflower is a completely I've heard vegan of that. The Wallflower cafe. is the absolute bomb. Is it? And then you get to see the sea as well. So it's like a double, double whammy. Mm. There's so much more to talk about. On this oh topic. my gosh, I'm so excited. Thank you so much. I know you was a little bit nervy about coming on and chatting with us, but I've I'm so glad time. you did. Thank you. Can we do, can we do something creative like this again? Because I actually really like bingo and <laughs> I didn't win and I am really competitive. And we've got some more, um, some more statements that we could perhaps do on another episode. Yeah, that'd be nice. So thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kerry. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Rainham Eco Hub's Tread Lightly podcast. If, like us, you're trying to be more sustainable, then like and subscribe to get notified when we release new episodes, or even better, share with your friends and family. Hope you enjoyed today's episode, and thank you for joining us. Stay safe, keep going, and find us on socials. Cheers, guys. This has been an I Am Listening exclusive podcast. For more information, head over to our website, iam-listening.co.uk.